how's it going? Welcome back. <laughs> In this video, I am proud to announce that my team of Avengers for a group project that our lecturers have assigned to us has finally assembled. Not only that, we also had a lecture presented by the infamous Corky Paul. He is best known for his illustrations for the Winnie and Wilbur children's books. And as you can tell from the title of this video, I did get a cheeky little interview with him. But first, our team project. Let's, that, let's get that out of the way. As part of our professional practice module, we were given a theme called the birdhouse and the teams were assigned to us at random so this is a new experience for me I'm working with some people that I've never even really spoken to especially people outside of my course I have a good feeling about this team as when we met up just after the teams were like announced we got to know each other discussed about our strengths and weaknesses for example my weakness is I can't produce enough sketches however comma my strength is I can do research and pretty much after that we started writing down our ideas and <laughs> the ideas that we came up with were very fun for example one of the ideas that we wrote down was build a bird workshop uh, meaning we could collect different birds from different places and put them into one app and then from bits and pieces of the same bird if you have a collection of them we can swap the beaks around for example so pretty much a bit inspired by spore Another example I can give from our mind map was a bird poo that helps lead you towards a different type of bird. The idea was to have the birds quite really like massive, uh, either on the ceiling or on the wall, and then you just have a trail of doo doo on the floor for you to lead up to it. Uh, in the afternoon of the same day, we went into uh, the lecture hall. I say lecture hall, it's more like a classroom and this is where the fun begins. Now Corky Paul, at uh, the beginning of the presentation, he gave us these tickets. And told us to keep hold of them till the end of the presentation. However, the lecture itself uh, it was how he produced one of his illustrations. One of the questions that I remember asking him How long does it normally take for you to do one illustration? About five days, five to six days maybe. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, this one maybe not so much. I'm just, I'm doing a book at the moment called uh, Winnie's Chinese New Year. And I've had to draw dragons and, you know, all those prancing animals with people and. And then I had to draw a whole banqueting scene and those, <laughs> those would take me about 10 days. Wow. So I'm running a bit behind on, 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 uh, on my deadline. Yeah. Five or six days. Or even 10. That's bonkers. And also in the lecture he also pretty much explained his process of how he produced his roughs, his drafts, and then uh, different uh, using different mediums to have a finalised product. For example, watercolours, inks, masking fluid. For those who uh, are not familiar with masking fluid, it's basically a liquidised medium. I actually have some. Let me just go get it. Basically, masking fluid is this liquidised medium which you can apply to any surface that you're working on, obviously wet, and leave to dry. Once it's dry, you can then apply any watercolours or inks that you need to. And then after your medium's dry, you erase 
the masking fluid and you'll be left with a nice white crisp space. Another question that was asked. Yes, how much research prior did you do? Uh, okay, yeah, good question. I do do a lot of research uh, for anything. Um, and uh, you know, with dinosaurs, I, I, you have to go, I, go, I went into to drawings of dinosaurs that were highly realistic. Uh, when you research stuff, Research photographs of items rather than photographs of other people, rather than other people's work of similar subjects, because it, it kind of confuses you, especially if you're a fledging illustrator and you're trying to find your voice or your your way of seeing the world. It's much better to take photographs and use the photographs and then interpret that photograph into your style. But with dinosaurs, I went and got you know all these uh, these reference books, and the great thing about dinosaurs is nobody knows what colour they were. Right, so you can do them whatever you want. You can put spots on them, dots, whatever. I found that his answers were not only very useful but also very interesting. I think hearing it from a professional standpoint makes the advice even better. Mainly as an amateur like myself, I would have thought you would, in order to produce like amazing like fantasy like sketches or like landscapes you need to use your memory or your imagination actually having photo references or references from other artists proves very useful as your illustration can become a lot better because some of the aspects are a little more accurate now it's not saying that oh you can't do freestyle you can it's just it's, it's, it'll, the outcome is a lot better if you were to use photo references recently i've started to use photo references and i tell you what wow it does actually help a lot i feel like most of my work has improved from using a photo reference instead of just using my brain and it's less exhausting as well. Now, the lottery tickets, as I mentioned earlier, what were they actually used for? At the end of the lecture, Corky Paul had some uh, books that he wanted to give out. If he picked out your lottery ticket, you would have won a signed copy of one of his books. Funny thing about this was the second ticket before my one was literally one digit away I don't know if I can en enhance this image at any point but it was 43 instead of 44 and guess what ticket was read out after that one my one <laughs> it's like the, the, the illustration gods have blessed me with winning a copy of Funky Tales signed by your boy <laughs> Corky Paul. Now the the uh, Funky Tales actually has some little tales in it like Jack and the Beanstalk, Golden Goose, Frog Princess and it seems like they have a little twist as well and they've got his illustrations in. Let me uh, read an example. Once there was a princess, pretty, sitting by a well, darkly deep, playing with a ball, bouncy bouncy, bouncy 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 splash, jumped. Wait what? Up jumped the princess, crying, peeped in the well, darkly deep. Where is my ball? Bounce Bouncy sat down and cried and cried and cried. This book was, uh, I believe, written by Vivian French and obviously the illustrations are by Corky Paul. I find his illustrations very entertaining and very comedic as well and also very detailed. Now. For the moment that you guys have all been waiting for in this entire video, I now present to you the short interview I had with Corky Paul. Enjoy. My first question is, did you have a boring job before you became an illustrator? <laughs> no, no I haven't. Uh, uh, as a student, yeah, I used to work in factories and that kind of stuff, you know. Uh. But I was so lucky, as I said in my talk, that I I did fine arts and then I walked into 
an advertising agency which was like an up and coming advertising agency and they were growing so quickly that they were giving me work to do that I would never have been entrusted with if I was been in a kind of established place but these were like a young hotshot agency the owners were in their 30s and they were growing quickly and so they kind of threw me in the deep end you know and I just and sink or swim so I did it and and so I was doing stuff that you know that I would never have done anywhere else. So I was really lucky, you know, to walk. I mean, I graduated and walked straight into a job. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. That is amazing. Uh, very lucky, very lucky. <laughs> and, you know, no CVs and no... I just sent them my slides and my work. Mm. No, um, what do you call that thing? Personal statement. Oh, that yeah. Nonsense. Wow. Didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> And my uh, second and last question is, what advice would you give to those who want to illustrate or make their own picture books? Okay, the, my advice is if you come out of art school, try and get a job in an advertising agency or a design studio because it, it's work and it helps you learn about design and typography and layout and all that because, you know, you can have an art director doing that for you, but I, I'm such a firm believer in, the, in you as the artist, as the illustrator, having control on that. And so you get the book to look how you want. And if you've got a knowledge of typography and layout and design, the publishers are happy because it's one less cook in the broth, if you know what I mean. Mm. You know? And if you can do it, they're delighted. Uh, and, and the other thing is, you know, you go to publishers with a portfolio, they look at portfolios all the time. Go to publishers with your own project. So what you're going to do is you're going to take three finished drawings with the three roughs that you did for those three finished drawings and maybe a few other roughs mm. and the manuscript typed up into those 12 pages that I was explaining, broken down, and, and present that. Because if you go with a project, then they look at it. But, you know, if you just turn up, unless you, and like I was incredibly lucky again, the guy liked my work, he said, have a look at this book and try it. You know, it doesn't always happen. Mm. You know, so the best thing you've got to make other things happen. The Beatles, nobody commissioned them to write those songs or pop groups, nobody commissioned them. They just do it and they perform it and then they, you know, plays, movies, people write them and, you know, nobody commissions a novel. Somebody sits down and they write a novel and then they, mm. they sell it, you know. So you've got to have your own project. That's the best advice I can give you. That's awesome. And draw every day. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> draw every day, yeah. yeah. All right, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> I found his advice very useful. To always keep drawing is the main thing. You'll find that some people tend to give up if they've looked at someone else's work and thought, oh, theirs is a lot better than mine. Like I said in my first vlog, just because someone's better than you doesn't mean you can't achieve the same quality. It's practice practice makes perfect and let's face it perfect is just a fantasy it's an ideal it doesn't exist trying to make something perfect is pretty much near to impossible you can refine it to the best of your abilities and that's okay there's nothing wrong with having something that's not perfect it's okay <laughs> for many years I from my drawing experiences from school up until now it's always like oh it's not good enough nothing that I produced was never good enough but here's the thing it doesn't need to be as long as you've put your passion you pour your soul in your heart into what you want to do that's the main key being passionate is the key I just want to say again, thank you for sticking with this journey and I think it's time for a little shout out. This is one of my characters from a graphic novel that I'm working on. Her name is Kira Kelps, but her nickname that she goes by in the comic is P because of her birthmark. The way she's captured the birthmark in this is amazing and I'm, I'm literally so chuffed with this. Like, this is exactly how I envisioned what P would look like. Her name is Stephanie Horner. 
You can contact her on Instagram at skhart underscore one. You can follow her on Tumblr at skh1996. On Facebook at skhart. Uh, YouTube skhart. And you can buy some more work from her Etsy store at skhart store. And I just want to point out that her business cards were really cute. That's her new business card. So I hope you've enjoyed the interview with Corky Paul and a little experience on my, my process with my teammates, which I'm really looking forward to as I'm more of a lone type. I prefer to work on my own, so working with an assigned team is gonna be quite interesting. I'll give you feedback on the journey of it and I hope that we can make something amazing from this. Alright so hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next one. I'll see you in next <laughs> I'll see you next time. Stay thirsty.